Welcome back. This is my take on an open source alternative for Stream Deck. Stream Deck starts at around $120. Free Touch Deck, on the other hand, can be built for less than $20. It can be used to create pages of hotkeys to control software like OBS or your favorite design software, or just create shortcuts to speed up common tasks. Today's video started about five months ago when I watched a video from Adam Welch about FreeDeck. FreeDeck is an open source alternative for Elgato's Stream Deck, written by Kilian Geuswisch or Gorili if you look him up on GitHub. I had the idea to use a TFT touchscreen to do basically the same thing. FreeDeck uses an Arduino Pro Micro with the Atmega 32U4 that has USB support built in it. One downside is that the Atmega 32U4 runs at 8 MHz when powered at 3.3 volts, which these TFT touch modules that you can get on AliExpress use. Now you could run it at a higher speed and do some level shifting, but I thought to myself, I have this ESP32 lying around, why not give that a try? Once I saw Brian Locke's video about the BLE keyboard library written by TVK, I also found a way around the fact that the ESP32 doesn't have native USB support. I ordered a few TFT touchscreens from AliExpress and installed the TFT ESPI library by Bodmer. This library comes with an example called Keypad 480x320, which incorporates an Adafruit GFX compatible button handling class. This was my starting point. A big feature of the ESP is that it has Wi-Fi which meant I could run a configurator on the ESP32 itself. Configuring the buttons is done by accessing a web page hosted on the ESP32. All configuration files are in JSON format and are saved to the ESP32's flash memory and using Arduino JSON to serialize and deserialize the JSON files. This means that when you have uploaded the code to your ESP and uploaded the necessary files to the flash memory, all configuration can be done without having to recompile every time you want a button to do something else. The configurator gives you access to the button colors, the menus and most importantly the function each button has. Each button has three actions associated with it. Each action can be a keystroke that will be sent to a BLE paired device or it can be a delay. These actions are sent in order. A keystroke can be any key press which you would be able to do on a regular keyboard. Because it is basically a keyboard, it works natively on Windows, macOS and Linux without the need to install any drivers. Just pair over Bluetooth and you're good to go. I think that to better illustrate the capabilities of Free Touch Deck, I'll create a scenario where you might use Free Touch Deck. Imagine that you're streaming using OBS. In OBS you have a few scenes set up. You also have a fade between scenes. Now when you are in studio mode, and you want to switch from one scene to another, you have to select the scene and press the fade button. We could automate this process using one button on the free touch deck. First in OBS we have to create a keystroke for the scenes we want to be able to change to. And for this example I'm also creating a keystroke for the fade button to demonstrate multiple keystrokes with one button. And while we're at it I'll also create a shortcut for muting the microphone to show another feature. Next on the free touch deck you can start the configurator by going to settings and then Wi-Fi. By default Wi-Fi is disabled. If you have set your Wi-Fi settings in the Wi-Fi config JSON file when you compiled and uploaded the code to your ESP32, free touch deck will connect to your Wi-Fi network and start a web server that hosts the free touch deck configurator. You are now able to access the configurator by opening a browser and going to freetouchdeck.local. If for some reason MDNS doesn't work on your Wi-Fi network, you can also access the configurator by going to the IP address that is shown on the screen. In this scenario we have two scenes and a fade button. I'm going to make button 1 switch OBS to scene 1 and button 2 switch to scene 2. For both buttons this is the same process. So for each button we need three actions. The first is the shift key press. The second is F1 or F2, and the third is F12 for the fade action. You do not need a key release action, because this is done by default. 
I'm going to configure the third button as mute mic. Because mute and unmute are the same keystroke, I'll configure this as a latching button. This will change the button color to the latching color I selected on the general config tab. After you press it again, it will change back to the function button color. Once I'm done, I click the save configuration button. And after successfully saving the configuration, I have two options. Continue configuring my free touch deck or restart. A restart is necessary to re-enable Bluetooth and to load the new configuration. All right, it's time for a quick demonstration. Uh, this is not where I normally stream, but it'll be fine for now. On the left of your screen, you're seeing the scene that is queued up. And on the right, you can see the scene that is currently, well, in my case, it's recording, uh, but normally that would be streaming. And if I touch the DSLR logo, it will switch to the lab view, which is not my lab, by the way, I wish it was. And if I touch the splash screen button, it will switch to the splash screen. Now I can also mute. And now you can hear me again. I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you want, you can build one yourself. I've listed the parts needed in the description below. And if you like, you can contribute your ideas or even code by going to GitHub or joining me on my Discord server. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.